Okay, so the next question is, uh, how did you handle friendships once saved when you feel you can no longer relate and have nothing in common? And this question comes from Elise. Elise has a good question. Elise has a good question, and the, and the question that she's asked is not an unusual one at all. I think mean, it's a common experience of all of us. Um, First Peter, First Peter chapter 4, has an interesting aspect to it and it's from verse 1 to 5 sorry first peter chapter 4 4 yep verse 1 to 5 and it says for as much then as christ hath suffered for us in the flesh arm yourselves likewise with the same mind for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men but to the will of god for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of right, speaking evil of you. This is a picture of our life in the past. Mm. You know, we used to do exactly the same thing we used to we used to reap the will of the gentiles we used to do the same thing we walked in lasciviousness we walked in our lust we walked in excess of wines revelings that's like partying and banquetings and abominable idolatries now all of a sudden there's massive change that's happened in your life you have literally been transformed mm. and everybody can see it this is the interesting thing about christianity you know it's not the words of your mouth that make a difference. You know, Roman Catholics call themselves Christians. And this isn't the Roman Catholic bagging session, but they call themselves Christians. And yet no one speaks, no one looks at them and, 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 uh, and queries their manner of life. They don't query it. Yeah, they don't there's ask no, the question. There's no real separation. There's not a real separation, yeah. you know. And it's exactly the same thing with other religions. But anyone who says that they are a Christian, born again, blood bought by the blood of Christ... Everyone is looking at them and watching them to make any false move. The other thing I've noticed too is people tend to th say that, oh, they've joined a cult. <laughs> They'll do that too. <laughs> and it's all of a sudden they start picking on them and start realising there is a separation that's happening. The separation is a natural separation. Mm. It's, it's heartbreaking too because you know we lose some people who, at times, some people who are close friends, but also people who not necessarily leading us in the right direction. Now, before I became a Christian, there was one thing that I, that I remember. I read a lot of secular books. And, and even many of those secular books would also talk about the same thing. If you, um, those who you spend time with, you become like. Um, the Bible actually has a reference to that. And it says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Mm. Um, so if you are going to hang around people who are lasciviousness, lascivious, excess of wines, revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatry, you, you're going to be hanging around with a thief, you're going to become a thief. Mm. If you're going to be hanging around with, a, um, you know, with, with, with people who, who behave in immoral and bad ways, uh, you can't help but find your life moving in the same direction. Mm. It's one of the reasons as a parent... You used to be very watchful over the people your children hung around with. They're a bad influence. I don't want my son or my daughter being with that person. Mm. You know, you know, she smokes and my daughter's going to end up smoking. And, and, and we know that from experience because exactly the same thing happened to us when we were growing up. If we hang around individuals who, however, are moving in a positive direction which all the wicked people used to stir up, and I was one of them, I, there was always a group of kids at school that we used to refer to as stems. They were too straight, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting them, name. We called them stems. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, we used to stir them up because, you know, they, they, you know, they, were, they were on the outer, you know. Mm. Um, it's exactly the same thing what happens, though, when you come to Christ. It's just a little bit more pronounced. Mm. Because now you literally are changed on the inside. It's not that it's not that you've made a stern decision that you're not going to be drinking alcohol 
or at a party or anything like that or getting drunk or anything like that is that you don't want to. Yeah, that's right. You don't have that desire no, anymore to... No, and that's the interesting thing about <clears throat> this as well. It's, it's People think, oh, I've got to give up this, 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 this if I'm going to become a Christian. Well, no. It you don't. You don't have to give up anything. It, you, it just happens. It just happens. Yeah. You are changed. The, what, what happens to becoming a Christian is a real thing. It's mm. a real change. It's a transformation. It's not just you know head knowledge, believe in something new and deciding to go on a diet for a while. Mm. You know This is an actual transformation in your life. There will be things in your life that are just going to fall off. I used to think that. I used to think I had to change so much before I could, you know, uh, before I could be saved sort of thing. You had to be and, good enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And and that I think for me that was my stumbling block mm. back then. Um, and yeah, it was just just weird because when when it happened, it, it happened naturally. It was like, oh, how d- you know, how did I enjoy doing those things before? Mm. Yeah. I, you know, it now it it's a real repulsion again. <laughs> it is. You know, to all the things that I used to do. It is. But sadly, and this is the sad part about it is not everything is gone away from mm. us. You know, there are a lot of things that have fallen off. Um, yeah, there's, I think there's still things that everybody has struggled with. Or still struggle with. And, and, you know, First Corinthians speaks about that. It says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such mm. as is common to man. And I think if you get too distracted in the world, that's you when... You can fall back into That's it. when you'll, yeah. Yeah, it talks about backsliding. It doesn't mm. mean you've lost your salvation. It just means you've lost your affections towards the Lord mm. and you've slipped into idolatry that you used to enjoy so much mm. you know um but uh, but no there are things that did genuinely change within you uh, mm. i used to swear like a trooper i was i was mate i was brought up on building sites I'm, yeah not you know? proud to say but yeah i was very much the same yeah my wife used Grew to tell up in me a off. mining town so yeah know. my wife used to tell me off like how much i swore and i remember my brother-in-law actually saying well i know you don't swear anymore mm. you know and it wasn't a conscious effort on my part to stop mm. it just i don't know it just stopped that was one of the first things I noticed too. Was mm. yeah, I just stopped swearing. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, an expletive will come occasionally, usually in the mind. Mm. I yeah. try to make sure that it doesn't <laughs> come out through the mouth. I've had that happen <laughs> if I've stubbed my toe really badly, and then yeah. it, and then you remember, and it's like, oh no, that's not a good word nah. to say. <laughs> no, nah. so it's uh, you know we're not not perfect, not perfect yet, mm. you know, but um. And also but, on that, I mean. It, to, that's not to say that we don't now hate our friends either. Absolutely like, not. Yeah, we still the love opposite. our friends. Yeah. The, the actual opposite. We, we, we probably love them more now mm. than we've ever loved them before mm. because our burden for them is to, that they would be saved, that they yeah, would know right. Christ. And it's not that we want to separate ourselves from them. It's that we actually find that they are the first ones who may be repulsed by us. Some will be attracted, mm. uh, but it, that's also difficult because the Bible says that a prophet is without honour in his own home and in his own land. Um, there, There is this familiarity that breeds contempt. There is this point at which some of our friends will say, no, I don't want to have anything to do with, mm. with, with your religion, with what it is that you say you believe. And they will want to separate from us. Mm. There's this repulsion that happens. I remember when I stopped drinking, and um, and it was exactly the same sort of thing. Being conscious of it also, because that was it was it was strange for me to stop drinking. I was never an alcoholic. I just used to I enjoyed the social drink, and you know, I, and I didn't mind a glass of port or, or this or that and the other. But desiring to become a pastor. Um, I knew what the scriptures taught with respect to it and I needed to really refrain from it and start mm. moving away completely from drinking at all. And I, even Christians that were around me were repulsed by it. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't wow. like it. Some of them didn't <laughs> like it because they wanted to be justified in their own um, in their own drink and I wasn't condemning them, didn't say anything to them at all. Mm. And yet that's, that's what I found. So you're going to find that it'll be your friends who would generally make that first move away. Mm. Um, but being like them and still an, attending to the things that they attend to, whether it's nightclubs or parties or pubs or anything like that, uh, you're going to find that your own walk is going to really, really struggle. Mm. You're, you're not going to be satisfied with the relationship with your friends. Mm. You're only going to be satisfied in your relationship with the Lord. The other thing that happens is new friends come along. Mm. 
and those friends who share the wonderful joys of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the biggest sorrows that, uh, that many Christians have expressed to me is that they don't have any friends who know Christ. You know, uh, my daughter went to a secular school and even when she went to a Christian school, there was very few within the Christian school that actually really knew the Lord. Mm. They were at a Christian school, but they didn't mean that they were Christians. And, um, and th- that was the thing she found. And she longed for a friend who knew the Lord that they mm. might be able to talk about the Lord with. You know, you need to join a faithful church to find that. Yes, we've made some wonderful friends. Yeah, it's and a wonderful it's, blessing. And it's grown. It has grown. It? <laughs> it's good. Okay, so um, next question is... 